Holly Randall and Filter is brought to you by BetterHelp. My listeners get 10% off of their first month. Just go to betterhelp.com slash Holly Randall and get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Holly Randall to get matched with a therapist that's perfect for you today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. If my guest looks familiar, it's because I interviewed them as Lance Hart. But today I have the honor of introducing Lucy Hart. Lucy is a trans woman who is actually in the middle of her transition. And following her on Twitter, I have been both fascinated and truly inspired by how open she is about the process. I thought that bringing her on today would help educate all of us on what it means to take that kind of journey. So let's please welcome performer, advocate, educator, and indie porn network owner, Lucy Hart. Hi, Lucy. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Glad to be back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How, when was the last time we spoke? It was during the pandemic, right? Pretty sure it was during the pandemic. Uh, Who knows? Yeah. Were we talking about like COVID and how do people make porn in COVID? Probably. I feel Probably like that's all anybody that. talked about. That's for all we like talked about. <laughs> two years. Yeah, forever. Yeah. Um, and uh, you survived. You came out on the other side. How are you feeling yeah. post pandemic? Pretty good. I'm like getting, it's fine. I've waited too long to get out and be social, um, mm. which I think a lot of people maybe did. And, mm. uh, so, but I, I don't regret it. I think, you know, I did what it, it's like, I needed the time, I guess, to be alone, no, like a lot of people did too. So, but uh, just in the past week, honestly, I'm starting to like, go out and try to make new friends and hang out and do, do things, you know, um, this weekend, I'm going to an event with my wife, you know, like, we're just kind of, uh, and it's cool. It's just different. And it's also, mm-hmm. it's weird because if I go to an event, like I did go to Xbiz LA, um, right near the end. Like there was that was Omicron, so it was like mm. the last. Not that it's over; it's not over, but you know what I mean. It was like okay, fuck it, we're going out. That was what right. that was, and um, I didn't know not one person recognized me because I transitioned. I look a little different, walk different, mm. talk mm. different. So that's trippy because I'm seeing people I've known for years, but I'm seeing them the way they treat strangers. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Oh, like this person's a really good hearted person. Wow. This person's kind of a dirt bag. Like if they don't know, I'm like a, not that I'm a big deal, but like, they don't know who I am. So they're like, just treating me like some weirdo that walked up to them and said, Hey, how you been? They're like, "Mm," you know what I mean? So that's, that's trippy. That's like weird. Um, Interesting. But cool. You know what I mean? It's, it's cool being like a, in a way invisible, but like not like as soon as I say, Hey, I'm Lucy you used to be Lance. We totally know each other. They're like, Oh, you know what I mean? And then they're cool. right. But right. Yeah, so that, that's yeah, that's, it's yeah. kind of an interesting perspective to go out and present yourself as somebody different that people that you know so well may not recognize. Right. And yeah. Seeing that. <laughs> actually, that's super interesting. Yeah. It's been weird. But it's cool. Yeah. How about you? How's it been for you? Um, good. You know, I had a, was I pregnant when I talked to you last? You were going to move. You really had like moving boxes. Okay. So I'd had the baby. Thank you. Oh, you had a baby. Okay. I had, so I, I I had had the baby when we moved. I'd already had the baby. Okay. So yeah, it's hard to, it's been such a weird last couple of years, the blur with the pandemic and then having a kid. Yeah. Everything's, everything's a blur, but yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm in my new place with crappy internet, which is why I was kind of late. Um, but, uh, you know, just, uh, living the dream, man, shooting porn and being a mom. (laughs) There you go. Cool. Good deal. So let's talk about you. So, um, yeah. So last time we spoke, you were Lance and -hmm. now you are Lucy. So let's, I guess, start from the beginning. When did you have an inkling that you were born the wrong gender? Um, 
well, I always knew that just when you're a kid in the eighties, there's no words for that. Like mm-hmm. it's not an option, you know, or at least where I was, it wasn't an option in Texas where I was at the time. Um, but like I, my only friend, my only like playmate friend when I was a little kid was this nice girl named Joanna. And I would totally like wear her clothes and stuff. And I was mm-hmm. like, and then I kind of like, people found out and they were like, ah, da, da, you know, like parents sometimes do like, don't do that. Ah. So I was like, oh shit. Okay. I shouldn't do that. And then, um, as I grew up, I, uh, my mom works kind of fashion industry adjacent. So she, uh, dressed me well, you know what I mean? And I looked good as a dude. Um, I was very socially awkward, but I, so I like had, that's a whole nother story, but, um, it's just easier to be a dude. I mean, it was, mm. I was, and to put it, I mean, not to be too cringy about it, but when you're like a pretty good looking cis white male in a middle class family, like life is kind of, it's easier. It's privileged is what it is. It's privileged. So mm. I was like, whoa, I don't fuck this up. You know what I mean? Uh, I was scared. I was scared. I was uh, not willing to. They didn't have the bravery that like the two kids in my high school had to come out as gay, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Or right. anything like that. And also I didn't know what trans was yet. So I didn't know what I was. I was like, right. okay. um, so fast forward to I'm in my twenties, I start meeting actual trans people. And initially I'm like, Oh God, that looks really difficult. I, I hope I don't have to do that as it, but I think a lot of cis people, the first time they meet a trans person would be like, whoa, what's it like? Oh my God. Like I have questions, but I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Like, you know, that's right. more what I get than, um, oh shit. How hard is it? Like what do I have to do? You know, like I knew mm-hmm. then I was just hoping I wouldn't have to, like I could keep, I could be Lance Hart that wears fishnets and pantyhose and does like gender bendy stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was getting celebrated and I was winning awards and I was making like money hand over fist, just doing that the whole time. I'm like, why are no other like muscly cis dudes putting fishnets on? Cause I'm killing it over here. It's the easiest thing. They're like $8. I just throw them on and then do regular porn, but in fishnets and people are like right. freaking out like, Oh my God. So anyway, I was just doing that and I was like, okay, well, this is cool. And then, uh, um, I just were, you know, I built perv out and da da da. Empire building mode ensued, and so I was just go 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 go. Like I'm, I'm sure you've experienced when you're an entrepreneur and just building a thing. It's kind of all you do, you know, mm-hmm. like that. And of course, fell in love with my wife. So, and then between, and then that was like the main focus in my life. And then still trying to build the empire, there wasn't much time for like feeling what's going on on the inside. You know what I mean? Other than like, I'm in love. This is amazing. But not like, what am I? Uh, like if I detach from everything, what am I? You know, I don't have time for that shit. So pandemic happens. Um, I'm making more money than ever because I own so much content and people are just buying it all, you know, because everyone's locked up at home. Um, business is growing. Everything's growing. And I worked myself, I did the, what the entrepreneur's dream is, I think for everyone is I worked myself out of my own business. Like I outsourced literally it be- began as like a, I can outsource being on set. Like I just paid directors to do this for me. Cool. I don't have to go on set now. What? And then I, st- I hired like a admin person and then I was like, okay, that person does all the emails and the do, 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 do. Okay, cool. And it was like an exercise. And then it ended up being like an obsession. Like how little can I do? And I got it down to like two to three days a month of like focus on the, on the porn network I ran. And I didn't really have to do anything else. And then it got down to like a couple hours a month of like, I had to run payroll and that was it. And I was like, I made it. Yay. Retired 42 years old, married, never having kids. We're done. You know what I mean? Like yeah. fucking cool. Maybe I'll work and get a rental property or some bullshit. Like, I'm done with life. This is so cool. And I really enjoyed that for like two hours. And then I was like, it just was overwhelming. I started, I was like, I didn't have anything distracting me. So, uh, and at the same time, Charlotte was just killing it at life at a whole new level. Like, um, 
learning how to play the harp while doing new career shit she'd never done before and all of this kind of, so she was busy, like busier than she'd ever been. So I had a lot more time just kind of alone. And yeah, like literally two hours into it, it was like this, not a voice in my head. It wasn't that, but it was, a, and it wasn't even a feeling, it was just an awareness of like, okay, time to transition to female. That was it. Wow. Just like, shit. You know, what, what really happened was I, that was happening. And then I was like, well, I'll shave my legs. I was like home. I was in a hotel alone and I was like, shave my legs. Let's see. I've never done that. It's so weird that I've never shaved my legs with all the queer shit I've done in my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, this would be fun. I don't know, whatever. Shave my legs. And then I look down and I'm like, that's me. Those are my legs. Like for the first time in my life, like that's mm-hmm. smooth lady legs. And I was like, I was kind of pissed. I was like, fuck, this is going to be hard. I really was hoping to just enjoy 30 or 40 years of fucking off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like total financial freedom. Just do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And then now I got this thing ahead of me. I got to transition. Fuck. But good news is uh, I'm, again, like, it's it's cringy to, like, celebrate privilege but also i worked my ass off to get the resources and the connections so i don't mm-hmm. I, it's a weird thing that basically I've, I've had it easy with this transition because i know people who know the best doctors and i know and i have friends with i'm friends with lots of beautiful trans women who've done all the stuff they had to do and i can just call them and text them and like hey what about this procedure what do you think and they're like don't do that or i oh, know that's cool do that or i'm doing that right now you know what i mean like that mm-hmm that's such a leg up. And then my wife being like super gay helps a ton. Cause when I told her, Hey, I shave my legs. I'm kind of thinking about transitioning. And at first I was like, I don't want to do the hormone thing. I'm like, that seems weird, but I, maybe I'll just dress more femme. And she was like, really cool. Oh, that's hot. You know, like it wasn't like a lot of married couples. It's like, uh, she's reading books, like to try to be supportive. And she's like, everything in this book is like some lady freaking out because she found panties in her husband's drawer and like having a meltdown and i'm mm-hmm. like if i found panty you have panties in your drawer you always have but like if i found something more femme i'd be excited you know what i mean like it's kind of yeah we got really lucky in that sense um yeah actually the day before we got married we we're hanging out with a bunch of friends and she was like that's so weird to me that i'm marrying a man like i've always dated women but i love you i mean this is great but weird right and i was like huh you know, and uh, so here we are, just kind of funny, like a life wow. sometimes, you know. God, that um, is. But yeah, then just I kicked it off with a, a really lucky, I knew, um, uh, well, my friend Colby Jansen's a performer. Uh, before Colby was a gay porn superstar, everything superstar porn person, Colby was a scientist. Like, you know, like schooled up lab, did nerdy science shit. And someone that Colby worked with happens to now be arguably like the top endocrinologist in the world when it comes to transitioning people. And mm-hmm. it's like the go-to, per, like the person, if there's a Netflix special about someone transitioning, they probably went to this guy. You know what I mean? It's like, a he's the guy. And so um, that was a huge leg up, like starting off with hormones done right. And uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And the medicine is just not caught up. You know, I mean, it's better than ever, but if you go to a doctor, if you just go to your health insurance, if you have health insurance and you're like, uh, transition or whatever, search, just start your search there, you're probably going to get fucked up. Like you're going to mm. get into a, a road that doesn't work or it's bad side effects or totally wrong information about like how things work. And, and so I've, I've been very fortunate in that sense, but I've also had to work my butt off to like learn things you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, you know, like I mentioned before, it's, it's great how open you are on Twitter. So I feel like people who follow you get an insight into what the right things to do are. And I feel like you would also be open to answering people's questions. And that's also like why I was hoping to interview you today, because I thought you could provide some resources and some insight to people who wanted to take that make that leap and, and, you know, transition. Um, so I have like so many questions related sure. to that, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to like give them info. I bomb. Um, I am working on a book. 
on it. It's like okay. on basic, like not like transition for dummies. That's what everyone's like. Oh, like transition <laughs> for dummies. I'm like, mm, that sounds stupid. Um, but I haven't titled it yet. <laughs> but essentially, hilarious. The bit, the main, my my really only beef with this process is when you say I'm trans, I'm changing genders. Now the world, pretty much for the most part, says congratulations on being the real you. That's amazing. Wow, they celebrate it. Right. It's so it's cool. That's I'm not beefing with that. Mm -hmm. But then when you say, I want to go as fast as I can to get there, like I want to and I want to be sexy. I don't want to just pass as that gender. I want to be hot. Then the world says, Whoa, slow down. You need to accept like slow down. And people say shit like, enjoy your transition and it's like enjoy enjoy childbirth why don't you you know what i mean like it's fucking hard it's terrible like enjoy the baby but yeah fuck that. No, like it, come on and <laughs> childbirth so, and, is not fun no and and the world <laughs> is just like well you, you know I, if you start pushing back and asking questions to doctors and practitioners like okay how do we speed this up how do we overlap these procedures in the most efficient way to get me to the goal they immediately push back Whoa. So that's what it, the book I want to, I want the book to fix that. And I'm not, I'm a dirty pervert pornographer. My book isn't going to fix that. But hopefully someone who isn't a dirty pervert pornographer reads the book, sees that it's sold and they got, made a lot of money and there's someone that the world respects and then they change it. So, and I think that's real estate. I think we can pull that off. So. Um, Why do you think you get that pushback? to enjoy your transition and slow down? Like, is it, do they say it's for medical reasons? They want to make sure that each procedure takes properly and that you don't have adverse effects or do they think you might change your mind halfway through? Like, I don't why know. do you think there's that pushback? I don't, I really don't know. I could make some theories, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Cause it's weird. It's like, if you say, uh, like hair removal, let's just pick that. Yeah. So, the majority of trans women that at least that I've met years into transitioning still shave every day because hair mm -hmm. removal is so painful and hard and expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's just hard to find anyone to do it in an efficient and good way. Um, mm -hmm. And there's so much misinformation around it. So it's just easier to just shave every day. But I mean, I'll ask you, but I know you can't. Can you imagine shaving your boobs every day? No. Like, and your neck, and your face, and your knuckles. Like, so you don't have hairy knuckles in your hands. Yeah. And then every day. And if you don't, okay, you're not going to get to it every day, but you, it's going to stick out. It's going to come up. Right. You know, like, oh, well, today I'm wearing a high neck outfit, so I don't have to shave my tits. Right. You want to live like that? You know what I mean? So but when you go out into the world and you say, okay, well, what do people do? They do laser hair removal. It's like a, that's the most common thing. The laser techs will say, if you're like, okay, how long is this going to take? They're like, well, I don't know. Everybody's hair follicles are different. Your hormones affect this. Your genetics affect this. And then they just kind of blow it off. No one looks into, okay, but there's those are variables. Let's start fucking with them. You know what I mean? Like, let's see what, let's try to make this work. Like, um, if someone said, how long does it take you to make money in porn? And, and everyone just said, oh, I don't know. It's different for everybody. That would be true. But you would still pursue trying to make it go faster. Like you right. would get out there and learn and compare this to that. Do, 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 do. How do I, oh, I'm, I put this video out. I made a lot of money. Should I do that again? You do it again. Oh, I didn't make money the second time. Something about it did. So let me, you know, you know, you get in there, right? Right. You don't just say, well, I'll put the porn on the internet and eventually they'll make money. I hope. Uh, no, and people do that fail. So it's weird. I th I, yeah, I think that, I don't know. It, it might be a little pandemic related. Also, just the level of uh, um, people are lazy now. <laughs> we all stayed home for like a year and a half in our pajamas. So yeah. when you go to a place where you give them money for a service that they provide, it's like much more common these days I've found for people to say, it's hard. I don't want, I don't want to finish the job. I don't know if you run into that a lot. I run into that all the time. Like, I, I do run into like 
certain services are much harder to get appointments for. Like everybody seems booked up. And I thought it was just There's because that. everyone's now like, oh, okay, now the pandemic's over. I can go get like Botox now, you know, or sure. I couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, that's, that's a good, I've never gotten, I tried laser hair removal once and mm -hmm. it hurt so bad. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I was like, mm -mm, I'm done. But this was also like 10 years ago. So it's probably better now. Well, so it's gotten better. Um, here's what you would run into. If, if you went, I can tell you right away what you run into. They would say, well, you have blonde hair. So the laser will only work on certain parts and it might not work. But right. that's not true. Your hair, there's the hair coming out of your body. There's a hair follicle. The hair follicle pigment does not always match the hair that comes out of your body. So you might have blonde hairs on your head with black follicles. Mm -hmm. And a laser hair tech would never know that because when you come in, you're shaped. Whatever area they're zapping is already shaped. So mm -hmm. they have no idea, like, if this is even working, if you're getting results or anything. So if you go to an electrologist, they take a small needle, like an insulin needle, and they just stick it all the way down the follicle. And then they dig around and then make it match. The, they line it up so the angle matches the direction the hair is coming out. Because, you know, hair is coming out all funky, different directions. Right. And it match that. Then they run a charge through it and they hit it one to like eight times, just like tap, 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 until hopefully the follicle explodes. Then they take tweezers and they, they pull the whole hair out with the follicle. And then they can see. So if you ask an electrologist, they'll say, oh, yeah, there's like black hairs and white follicles, white hairs, and black follicles. Oh, you never fucking know. So you got to do both. You got to go to the electrologist and figure out first, OK, on this part of my body, like on my cheek. I mostly have black and gray hairs, but the black hairs have black follicles. So laser will work on the black hairs on my cheek. Um, on my neck, I have white hairs with black follicles. So keep doing laser there. Um, on my upper lip, everything, black hair, white hair, whatever, has white follicles. So there's just no point in doing laser up here. It's like dumb. And then there's diode lasers, candela, IPL, like so many different ones that you got to try them all. So, so basically, if you decided I want to do laser hair removal again, don't go to a place that like sells a package where it's like sign up and pay eight thousand dollars and get twenty four treatments. It's just you're really, you're really gambling. Like you need to go to like multiple places and just do it once and see what your results are. And then you'll be like, okay, that laser works for that body part. Cool. Any other hairs, I got to do electrolysis on. That's like so you go like to somebody different than someone who actually does the treatment. You go to an electrologist yeah, who for then tells you, okay, but then you would get the treatment at the same place. Well, so some very few electrologists. So to be an electrologist, it's like more school than hair school, like to be a hair okay. tech. You know what I mean? It's like right. a lot of hours. Um, there's not many schools for it. It's just not a very well, there's not a lot of people do it. Because it's really tedious work. I mean, it's really right. difficult, and you can only make so much an hour. So, but to be laser hair certified, it's like you, we could go knock that out next week in like five right. days, and we could buy a laser and just open a shop. You know what I mean? We'd be good to go. So, some electrologists also go get laser hair certified and then buy a laser and then do both, but most do not. Um, so, you got to go to like my current electrologist, Hannah. Definitely. The, if you're in Vegas, go to Hannah, basically, is what I'm going to say here. But there's only three electrologists in Vegas. Hannah's the best. The lead electrologist. Give her a little plug. But um, uh, Hannah doesn't have a laser because Hannah's like a young young lady entrepreneur just starting out. She's amazingly talented at this hair removal stuff, but hasn't got around to buying a laser yet because they're really expensive. So Hannah doesn't have a laser. So Hannah... Um, and can't really refer you to laser places because Hannah's never done laser hair removal. But so I've had to go to Hannah and then go try this med spa has that laser. That med spa has this laser. This rando has a laser and is certified and works out of a whatever office. So I'll just go try that. You know what I mean? So I just had to go around and I've kind of got it dialed in now. I've got like an esthetician that has an IPL and a med spa that has a diode. And then I alternate back and forth. Holy shit, that that's so that's so much work and we're only talking about hair removal that's just hair removal and hair oh removal God. is at least for me nine to twelve hours a week i'm doing that wow. so and i'm spending is it 
Is it on average? Oh, it's fucked up. Yeah. I mean, I made, to put it in perspective, I made so much cock and ball torture porn that I was able to retire at 42, right? Like, that's a lot of cock and ball torture porn. I was in almost all of it, 11 years of that. And that wasn't shit compared to electrolysis. I mean, it's like, so I've heard of, I've gone to electrolysis people and they're like, man, right before you, this Navy SEAL guy was in here. He's acting all tough. Like, oh, I just want to get this part worked on. Thought it would be like a tattoo. And, uh, and like, they said, you know, like, what did he say? The Navy SEAL guy said, oh, it, you know, pain is just weakness leaving the body. Rawr, just go ahead, do it. I can take it. And he left crying and, like, had to give up early. And that's a Navy SEAL. Like, it's, it's like that. It's fucked up. Because it's different when you're getting – I've gotten tortured a lot for work. Normally, you get used to whatever the torture is, right? Like, you get whatever it is. You'd be waterboarded, electrocuted, burned, whatever. It's like, okay, you feel it once, and then you kind of mentally prepare for the next one. But if you're getting zapped on a hair that's adjacent to your lip, that feels wildly different than your throat, you know, or your nipple. Or like your cheek, like they'll be working on your cheek that uh, and you're like, ah, I could take that all day. There's not many nerves in the cheek. And they jump to your throat. Because the, the electrologists, to be efficient, they're just looking for that next hair. They're like in the zone. Just that, it's that Hannah's just working it. And Hannah's like the makes it less painful than most people. So she's good, but she's getting in there zapping. But I'm like, you get used to the cheek zaps and then it goes to throat and you just can't. You, you're like, even though I've done the throat zap, I don't know, I've put in 120 hours of this so far. So like, I'm, I know what's going to happen when I feel her fingers about to hit the throat, but I still, and then after the throat, upper lip, chin, uh, really close to your eye. You know what I mean? Like just da, 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 tip your nose. You know what I mean? There's hairs everywhere. So you just don't. It's impossible to be used to in my case. Or I'm just a big whiner about this. I mean, you know, pain, different people tolerate pain differently, right? So, right. Um, how much, how much more electrolysis do you think you need to have before you're done? I don't know. I'm hoping, keep going at the rate I'm going, three, four more months, maybe. That's still a long time to endure that kind of pain. It's a lot. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And that's just face and boobs. I've done a little bit of the bikini area, like, Mm -hmm. cock and balls area um and gotta finish that you know what i mean yeah. but the other thing is so then the late there's other parts like my legs i don't need any electrolysis on and I, I mean i could just shave my legs like every other woman in the world but yeah. while you're getting tortured you might as well like go hard right so <laughs> i'm doing from my toe hairy toe knuckles all the way up to below my eyebrows everything we're just getting rid of the hair um my legs are pretty much done from just laser. Okay. So like, that's uh -huh. cool. Like I don't have to ever shave my legs. That's pretty neat. Hopefully. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, there's no, no, there's no talent. You know what I mean? Cause the hairs can just, I thought I was done at one point, actually a couple months ago, I like went a week without shaving or anything. I had to take some time off cause the laser check burned a hole in my face and, um, it'll let that heal. That was rough. And then, um, while that was healing, there wasn't any hair growing back. So it's like, wait, but maybe I'm done. Maybe I'm done. Holy shit. And then, like the next week, it was like full goatee. It was like, ah, what I've done, you know. So, this is what it is. But, oh my god, that! But I, that I didn't think I was going to learn this much about electrolysis today. No, every and I have to I take a lift every time I go if my wife is busy and can't drive me because mm -hmm. I, I take a. I mean, I do a little. I'm a sober person, like I don't fuck with drugs or alcohol anymore. Mm -hmm. But for that, I do take something. Because it's just, yeah. and it's still fucked up. It still hurts with like that. So I wouldn't yeah. go in raw. I had my doctor prescribe me something to deal with it. Right. So I don't drive. So almost every lift ride, they're like, where am I taking you? And I'm like, electrolysis. And they're like, oh, like laser hair removal? And I'm like, how much do you want to know? And then <laughs> it's like, they, that's why I want to write a book. Because I'm like, yeah. this, just that is, and it's not just for trans people, the hair removal thing. It, when you go through menopause, yeah. You're gonna if you haven't, you're gonna deal with having a beard. So like, what are you gonna do? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a thing. So, wow. and it's crazy that we haven't like solved that. You know, right. um, most people don't know. So, I'm gonna put a book on that. But in the meantime, I'm tweeting about it. I'm not like I try to 
on my internet personality, you know, we all have them in porn. I try to be more than just my gender because I know some people do. It's like they're only, they come out as like non-binary or something. And then that's like yeah. their whole personality. So I try to like right. be more than that, but, yeah. um, but it's what I'm doing full time. I like, yeah. it's all I got going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. What I'm gonna, but, um, but yeah, I'm just putting the information out as I go. And hopefully when I'm done February, I'll be done with, recovered from every surgery and at that point i can uh fill in the outline i got it all outlined crank it out publish it hopefully make a little money off that i think it'll help people too so yeah so interesting all right guys we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and talk about all the other procedures that lucy's going through and um a little so much more about her journey so hang tight we'll be right back yeah Holly Randall and Filter is brought to you by BetterHelp. Now, what does burnout mean to you? Are you feeling burned out? I think that that's something that so many of us are experiencing these days. We all have really demanding careers, not to mention the priorities in our personal lives, and just so much going on around us that it's really hard to not feel just exhausted from everything that life wants from you. This is where good therapy can really come in. Trust me, from somebody who's benefited from years of therapy, I cannot recommend this opportunity to really take time for yourself. BetterHelp will allow you to customize your therapy experience. You can do a video chat, you can talk on the phone, or you can even do a live chat via text if you're just not comfortable seeing or speaking to anybody directly. My listeners get 10% off of their first month. Just go to betterhelp.com slash hollyrandall and get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Holly Randall to get matched with the therapist that's perfect for you today. All right, everybody, we are back. So Lucy, okay, obviously electrolysis is something that you're in the middle of and uh, yeah. you still have months left of it. Um, what was the first procedure? So actually, wait, let's talk about hormones because you yeah. mentioned earlier too, uh, you, you know, know the right people and how there's so many, um, so much misinformation about hormone therapy and that a lot of trans people are misled and do the wrong kind of hormone treatment. So can you tell us a little bit about what is the right hormone treatment? Sure. And I, and again, I'm, I only have my experience, right? So I'm probably going to say something that's like someone on Reddit will Blame me for like it's no no it works for everyone you know but I'm just right. t- speaking from my experience. Um, Doctor Powers is my hormone doctor, and um, Doctor Powers seems to have spearheaded the most efficient, practical, least side effect way to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyone who's like thinking about doing this, just look on Reddit for Doctor William Powers. Um, really great and interesting guy, and. Uh, um, he's just a problem solver. It's just a, that kind of a person just like has to go solve problems and, uh, driven by that. And so long story short, instead of estrogen injections, um, I have, uh, bioidentical estrogen pellets implanted into my butt cheek, like it's under my skin. So that was a one-time procedure. And this is, um, that procedure was developed for, uh, I think post menopause, something to do with menopause, because um, mm-hmm. your body stops producing cis women, stops producing hormones. Blah, blah, blah. So uh, it's a bioidentical hormone, estradiol is what they put in you. And uh, I went to see Dr. Powers, and um, the power actually went out in his building, and we were like, shit, we can't do this procedure, but you flew in from Vegas. What are we going to do? And then the power came back on. And he knocked out the procedure in about a minute and then the power went out again. So it's like really not that hard. I mean, for anyone else, it's probably really, really hard, but he does it all the fucking time. So for him, it was like, no big deal. I just felt an injection in my butt that numbed everything. And then he like crammed a whole bunch of pellets under my skin. That was it. That's my estrogen treatment. You know what I mean? Uh, Every six weeks I do blood work and send it to him and then, Eventually, there'll come a time where we'll say, okay, those pellets must have dissolved because you're not kicking out the estrogen. Let's do that again if you want. Um, but I'm not injecting every day and then 
uh, peaks and valley, having peaks and valleys with hormones, which is the cause from at least what Dr. Powers told me and from what I can tell, a lot of people transitioning or doing anything with hormones, bodybuilders doing steroids, um, if you catch them on a day that they injected, they're a whole different person than three days later. You know yeah. what I mean? Like every, feelings, emotions, problem solving, every, so much is starts with what's going on with your hormones. Um, mm-hmm. You get bad news that your reaction to that is way different depending on where you're at hormonally. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, just having a constant 24-hour day level thing with that is I'm very grateful for that. It hasn't been, I haven't had to deal with like crazy crashes. And then um, he started me on progesterone, which is like what your body was doing when you were pregnant, I guess. Like that's the hormone yeah. that was going on there. Um, so I take a pill in my mouth and then I put a pill up my butt every night. And mm-hmm. uh, that's had some cool effects. Like it's made my skin crazy soft almost too soft like i picked up a cardboard box and it like cut my arm just the cardboard you know i'm like so mm-hmm. soft and but it it's like ooh, i'm soft um move it's moved some fat to the right places you know what i mean um but that one because it's a pill i, I do every night it's got a little risey folly kind of situation so um mm-hmm. that one i definitely have had some like like a feelings of it like more and more about like wow feelings yay here we're, now i have them you know it's when you're a dude on testosterone especially like gay porn star muscle man injecting testosterone i had feelings of course and i think i was generally a pretty chill dude but um the emotions were best way to describe it is they were two-dimensional like there was sad glad mad scared you know generally and that was it uh now feelings are like with female hormones in me it's like it's like they're three-dimensional things that change shapes and they affect each other like it's just a whole different thing to be aware of like oh there's all these different kinds of sad and some of them feel kind of good even though it's sad weird right and then there's like sad that leads to angry and there's sad that leads to um breakthrough you know what i mean like it's all different i'm like what the fuck so that was weird to like navigate that um, That's so interesting. Do you feel like that, like feeling, experiencing what I guess would be, you know, feelings that are more female oriented? I, I don't know how you would say that. Um, well, yeah, like I mean, that, they're just, yeah, it's way the fuck different. Um, did you feel like that helped you understand Charlotte better oh, in any yeah, way? Way better. Yeah. A hundred percent. Cause interesting. Like when you're, when you love someone, if you're a dude and you're in love with someone, you really care about them and they're telling you once a month that they're having hormones and cramps and things going on, you really feel for them. And I did, but I had no concept for like what that's like. And then Mm -hmm. if that caused my wife to be like, I'm just going to stay in bed all day, you know, good for her. She should, but, uh, cause she could, but, um. I would react to that like, huh, really? Because when I'm upset, I just go to the gym and work it out. But I didn't say that because it's a total asshole thing to say. So, of course, I didn't say that. But that was my perception of like bad feelings. Go take good action and you'll feel better. Like it was mm-hmm. that when you're a dude, that's it. That's the, It's literally that simple. Like, like I'm depressed. Oh, I'll do the dishes and then I'll feel accomplished and then I can go on with my day. You know, short of like – catastrophic shit like a breakup or a death in the family then you're rocked but like generally shitty feelings for dudes can be solved with yeah action you know what i mean like quick action and you you and you hear that all the time with couples where you know and i experience it myself with my husband if i'm upset about something and i talk to him about it he wants to fix it he wants to find solutions for me Mm -hmm. to fix the problem and often i'm like I know how to fix this problem. I know what the solutions are. I don't want your input on that, or I don't want to take that action right now. I want to just talk about it. I just Mm -hmm. want to vent. Um, But he just can't help himself. Or like if as a dude, a cis dude, if someone said shit that people say now, like woke people, if they said, hey, I just need you to allow me to have space to feel this. Mm -hmm. 
I I would I didn't know what any of that meant. Like I knew the words, but I was like space to feel. I I don't. It's like a different language. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But now with female hormones, I totally get that. I'm like, yeah, I just need like get clear up a little vacuum, like a little room, like a little you know, clear the desk so I can put my feeling there and just let it fucking wiggle. You know what I mean? Just let it yeah. the, do its thing and then let me experience that and then it'll pass. As opposed to like, I don't got time to bleed. Rawr. You know what I mean? Like that you know, <laughs> tough guy shit. Just, it doesn't, and now I'm seeing, so so I own, my gay porn company is called Man Up, right? But mm-hmm. the URL is manupfilms.com because manup.com was taken. And for years, I was just waiting for the person who owned manup.com to like, they weren't using the domain. And I just wanted it so bad for my porn company because it's a cool domain. They finally launched their business and it's this like super alpha male thing. It's like this like alpha males are protectors of everybody and we're tough. And he like does these like men weekends where they yell at each other and like do like navy seal training and tough guy shit and they cry and beat on drums and stuff and uh that's his that's his thing that's bedros killian or something i don't know that's his thing mm-hmm. good for him he started a business yeah. but i follow his instagram because i'm just waiting it, like it, in the off chance i'm not rooting for his failure but if he were to go do something else i'm gonna buy that domain because i want it for mm-hmm. my gay porn company so mm-hmm. but now when i see his instagram posts i'm like this person has zero awareness of feminine anything. You know what I mean? Like, does not yeah. like it. Like, it'll be like a little meme. Like, are you depressed? Go work out. Like, that's the most simple thing that I've noticed mm-hmm. is a big change. And it's like, as a lady feeling person now, um, yeah, if I'm depressed, I can get on my stationary bike and I can grind out an hour of cardio and I'll feel a little better, but I still have to go feel the shit. Mm-hmm. You know, in order to like move on, I can't, I can't just burn it out with adrenaline like mm-hmm. before. So that's different. And I don't learn that. And then, you know, just wildly insecure for a while. And thank God Charlotte's like patient and kind. And, um, um, I had like maybe a two week meltdown at one point when I started on the progesterone and I just got super insecure. And I was like, babe, I don't want, to be a whiny, naggy, shitty person, but I'm freaking out. And she just kind of let me be that. And uh, it was very kind. She let you have your space to have your experience. To like do that. And, and I was very careful not to be like, my feelings were like, she just left the house without saying, I love you. She doesn't love me anymore. What the fuck is going on? Ah!" I like freaking out. (laughs) So, but I was like aware enough to be like, okay, this is some hormone shit. And also maybe some just generally codependent things that I need to look at. But she just left the house in a hurry. It's, she still loves me. She said she loved me yesterday. She still loves me now. It's fine. You know what I mean? But even though yeah. it felt like I'm getting dumped, it felt like I'm already going through a colossal divorce breakup, even though all she did was just, she had to go to a shoot and she was busy. You know what I mean? So I had to yeah. like fucking navigate that and i have not no one ever gets a total hang on that but you know i'm like working through it i got a good drink and good support group good friends um i do the work i journal i'm uh working my way through that like codependent no more book which is interesting Mm -hmm. to me um i think everybody should that should be like required reading in junior high probably because it's so i had no idea what codependent meant i thought it was like oh you call people that if you're like making fun of them for being weak or something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that like literally everyone has that. <laughs> like we just need to, there's very simple things to do to solve that problem, but they don't teach you it in school. So like, yeah, the there's fuck? a lot of things they don't teach you in school. It's interesting. I mean, I've never considered myself a codependent person, but I've also never really looked at it. Um, well, I so had maybe it until something it was like that I should, yeah. Well, here's here's my really layperson take on it. If you ever were in a situation where you became a caretaker for someone else, like your spouse got really really sick, or I'm kind you of had an alcoholic in, in your that, family, or yeah, I'm kind of in that situation with my dad a little bit, who has okay. Parkinson's. It's actually why we moved up here. I moved in with my parents oh. to help take care of him. 
you're a badass for doing that. That's so cool. Take care of your family. But so here's the gist of, without taking your inventory. Like anyone in that situation, you're going to do things out of the norm of like an independent person because you have to to take care of the person you love. Like you're going to yeah. drop, you're in the middle of something that's important to you and you have to drop it to go take care of dad. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Things like that. Yeah. In that moment, there's nothing wrong with that, but that is codependent. You and your dad are partners in this dependency in, in that mm-hmm. sense. You're like mm-hmm. you stand on your own, dad stands on your own, but you're teammates in this kind of dependency thing. In order for him to survive, you need you. So and you got to do it. So that now when that situation, uh, your dad heals or whatever. I, I'm sorry. I don't know anything about Parkinson's, but it's so, okay. He, he won't heal. I'm sorry. It only gets worse. It's okay. I'm sorry, it's okay. but okay. No, totally but okay. outside of that situation, now you're used to kind of that relationship. So it's very common for someone in your situation, or literally any human ever, to go treat your husband different because mm-hmm. of what's going on with your dad. Now your reaction to your husband might be a little different, or your kids, or people that work for you, or whatever. It's going to have a little stank on it, like a little, a little twist. Because you're not standing on your own, you're standing in a partnership with this emotional thing. So then those are codependent behaviors where you might like do things and then they're going to react to you. And then da, da, da. it's just this like contagious emotion thing that happens out there that like literally every human ever experiences. We're like an animal that needs each other. So we're going right. to do that shit to each other. But there's like some basic shit to like detach, not like get away from. Like I'm not, yeah. my job is not to get away from my wife, but I need to detach my emotional reliance from her leaving the house and saying, not, and forgetting to say, I love you in that one moment. And then right. four hours later texting me, sorry, babe, I love you. And me being like, oh, thank God she loves me. You know what I mean? I need to detach yeah. from that dependence in order to be cool. And there's ways to yeah. do You know what I mean? So it's just basic human shit that I just wish I knew when I was a teenager. I could have used that earlier. You know? Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I think kind of for me, it's, it's been hard for me, you know, moving up here. Cause you know, my mom's also here. My parents are still together and my dad's 80, my mom's 75 okay, and yeah. she's like in pretty, she's like, she's kind of exactly the same as she's always been, but you know, she's getting older and she's starting to like forget some stuff and need help with like basic things. And I find that like living with them and, and helping you know, take care of them and run the household has made me think about like the end of life a lot mm. and like getting old and like the, the, the scariness of that. And, um, I do think that that has had some kind of reflection on how I see life. There's a part of me that sometimes feels like, what's the point? Like we all die anyways. <laughs> like sometimes I just have these really horribly okay. dark thoughts yeah. and I like think about like what happens when I start to lose my physical abilities, when, age starts to like rob me of myself, my memory, um, you know, my abilities, my intelligence, like it's just, and I, yeah, I sometimes get into like kind of a dark place, which, and it's weird because it's juxtapositioned with, you know, my daughter who's a year and a half and watching her grow and learn and experience the world. So she's at the beginning of her life and I'm obviously taking care of her and my parents are kind of towards the end of their life and I'm also taking care of them. So it's like this weird, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to make it about me, but um, definitely gave me some things to think about. I think I'll definitely check that book out. I hear you. Yeah. No, and it's like, everybody's got some shit like that. And I think it's better now than it ever has been about people can like openly talk or even tweet about like, oh, on the way to therapy for whatever. It's it's just can be a part of the Mm -hmm. conversation now, which is cool. I think. Yeah. When I was a kid in the 80s, it had to be a secret that I had any kind of therapy or mental health, anything going on. Like, but I'm just, we, we could not talk about that. So I'm so glad we can, like, just like you have to, you know, we should try to eat better and go to the gym in some fashion and get some exercise. We have to do shit with our feelings. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Ah. But, uh, um, yeah. okay. So, okay. So hormone therapy. So is that, is there anything else, the progesterone and the, um, um, I take a bicalutamide every morning, which also is a Dr. Powers spin on it. A lot of people do spiro, spiral, spiro, spiro, spiro something. Um, and uh, basically that's an androgen blocker. Bicalutamide is an androgen blocker. So I take that. That's 
if I have any testosterone in my system, it can't do anything. It's kind of my mm -hmm. layperson understanding of it. Like if I were to inject tests right now, I don't know, I would just like pee it out or something. Like it wouldn't do anything because there's an androgen blocker going on. So right. that's also helps. That really just the way I look change pretty drastically. Mm -hmm. um, and, and feelings and other kinds. Of, I mean, it helps to transition along. And that's one that I don't know if I'm going to stay on that because uh, there's parts about testosterone I really miss a lot. You know what I mean? Like the, oh, there's good things about aggression, which mm -hmm. is what you get, you know, with problem solving. Sometimes aggression is needed to like, mm -hmm. like I got to go out there and get more money. Rawr, let's go do it in a healthy, ethical way. You know what I mean? But right. um, so I kind of miss that. And then sex stuff, like the bicalutamide makes, made my, like, made, killed my sex drive, first of all. When I come, clear stuff comes out, like nothing. It's like, beep, it's like pre cum comes out. But it feels better than any orgasm I've ever had in my life. And I could have multiple orgasms now. Like when I come, I'm not done. I'm like, lady coming. You know what I mean? But, kind of cool. but it also killed your sex drive. So but it killed my sex drive. So, like, on the rare occasion where I would have sex or jerk off, I would be like, wow, this feels amazing. But the actual drive to like do it wasn't there. So, and. Uh, Will that continue as long as you continue to take that drug? I'm told. And so we don't know. Other than Dr. Powers, there's no one out there like trying to tinker and figure shit out. Uh, my doctor says, you know that uh, he gave me a testosterone cream that I just put on my dick and balls uh, once a week. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to bring the sex drive back and also bring back function to the wang, um, which this is like a, a few things to unwrap here. So when you're on an androgen blocker, if you have a penis, you, you no longer have erections overnight. Like if you're normal penis people have three erections every time they sleep, every REM cycle, they have an erection just standard mm -hmm. that's why you know morning wood they wake up morning wood right right, right. um androgen blocker makes that not happen and then with no sex drive i just wasn't getting hard period because i wasn't didn't care i didn't think about it you know what i mean mm -hmm. if you have a penis and you don't have erections the spongy tissue inside the deck the part that actually gets hard it atrophies it just stops it's like well mm -hmm. we don't need to do anything so long story short this is common with most trans women. My dick shrank about half the size. And I was like, whoa, I don't like that. That's a fucking problem. You know what I mean? Like it's, for <laughs> porn? Come on. Like uh -huh. I'm, I like bottoming, but I also like want to lay it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like what are we doing? Yeah. So that was pretty abrupt. That was like a month ago. I finally went to go jerk off as a hotel. And I was like, you know, I'm going to a little me time. Let's get a little crazy. And, uh, yeah. and I went to get hard and I was like, where, where's the rest of it? Like what the, what the fuck just happened? Where's my dick? What is this? It's like half? Ah! It was like traumatic. I would say I don't. I try not to use the word traumatic too much because people overuse it. But that shit was traumatic. Yeah. I was fucked up over that. So get on the thing with my doctor. I'm like, what the fuck? Is, what is going on? And I think he did tell me that could happen. It's just so much information all at the same time. I just lost, got lost in the sauce. I didn't know. I was supposed to be using a penis vacuum pump and stretching my dick twice a day to keep that from happening, which is the only uh -huh. thing you can do in that situation. So solution, testosterone cream once a week, penis vacuum pump, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night, take Cialis every day to get some blood flowing down there. Uh -huh. Then after enough time of that, three weeks to three months, go to a urologist who can take out the spongy tissue, put in a pump, the, uh, the thing some performers have it's like a robo dick yeah. basically you press yeah. a button and it mm -hmm. after all of that recover from that the idea is my dick will be way bigger than it was in the first place and it'll be i'll be like a cyborg woman with a giant wang that it's hit a button and it gets hard so cool we solved the problem i had to figure that out on my own i had to talk because my endocrinologist is a brilliant brilliant person he's not a penis doctor he's, he's an endocrinologist so i had to go mm -hmm research like okay urologist las vegas there really wasn't a good one there's a lot of them but it, so okay urology papers figure out who's the most published urologist and who's like well respected and there's like two one in san francisco one in miami set up consults of both of them 
told both of them the situation, their data, what they told me, kind of synced up with each other, but there were some differences. So go back to both of them, go back to the endocrinologist with all the stuff, just cross-reference everything, get on PubMed and NIH.org or gov or whatever, research all the papers that are written, figure out the solution, which was Cialis every day, vacuum pump in the morning, vacuum pump at night, replace it with a, uh, whatever it's called, the Titan machine, you know, but, but you know, get the robo deck. Um, no, that's why, why I'm writing a fucking book because I had to fucking figure that out. No one, I mean, you know, like there's no. Yeah. That kind of information isn't out there. So does that mean that you don't plan on getting bottom surgery? Um, eventually. So the thing is, if you get a robo dick, uh, they last, they're supposed to last on the paperwork. Like when you buy it, like if you buy a car, it comes with paperwork because um, it's a machine. Uh, they're supposed to last 15 years and something like 75,000 erections. Like that's what they warranty it under. But. Everybody's you different. You warranty on your Robodick? Yeah. And then uh, everybody's different. Use is different. Like if I'm like doing DPs and pile driver every day, which I don't plan on at all. But if I were to go that way, it would wear out quicker than 15 mm-hmm. years. So mm-hmm. good news is if a good urologist puts it in, there's not going to be much scar tissue. So the next, the replacement you get four or five years later, you can get even bigger ones. If the urologist left scar tissue and fucked it up, you're going to have a smaller one. So it's like eh, a little risk there. Um, basically, I'm going to go lay it down with big cyborg wing as hard and as fun as I can for as long as I can. And then when it breaks, cool, vagina time. You know what I mean? Now I'll just switch it up okay. to vagina. And, but not, I'm lucky I, I can do that because resources, money, to, you know, take time off. Um, a lot of me would lo- would way prefer to have a vagina. I just, I kind of want to have some good years of being a MILF with a giant wing. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you can, so why, why not? not? Right. Yeah. That's the idea. So. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, yeah. it just it sounds like you, you get to experience all of these different, different things with both genders that none of, most of us, you know just have no idea this is just I'm so, excited about it yeah so interesting um so uh okay so and you recently got a boob job right yeah so I did that um Dr. Barrett hooked it up you just did a great job that's another thing um most boob doctors say oh if you want to go that big we got to do the the scar underneath like we got to cut underneath to put mm-hmm. you know da, 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 or we can go through the armpit can't go through the nipple if it's over a certain size but like everything else, you ask enough questions, you push back, you find out. There's a great doctor in, uh, in Beverly Hills, Dr. Barrett, who's really good at going through the nipple. So he went through the nipple, and I'm not going to have scars, and got big old titties. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, so, but yeah, I love these tits. It's fucking awesome. I got lucky. It didn't hurt. I, like, woke up, and it hurt really bad. It felt like an elephant was on my chest. And then I got back to the hotel after the surgery. Charlotte's taking care of me. And she had gone, we have the same boob doctor. Like, that's also a perk mm-hmm. of being married to like an ultra hot porn lady. It's like, you can just, where'd you go? Okay, I'll do that. Um, but the second day, third day or something like that, I was like, I feel fine. It doesn't hurt. I mean, they were like up to my neck. And you know how they are when you get yeah. boobs. But yeah. it's like, I had to like really be careful not to go pick up heavy shit. Because I was like, I feel right. fine. Um, yeah. So I got lucky with that. I think I was also taking human growth hormone, which mm-hmm. another thing that, people don't know about but if you're like going through an injury or a surgery and you get your hands on human growth hormone it speeds up the recovery time crazy fast and it makes your skin look good and there's all these perks to it i mean it's like so nice it's just um i don't know why it's like this like download secret but yeah that's that shit but, and it's something that you fast. can't it's something that it's really difficult to access right like is it yeah can you be prescribed that my doc, one of my doctors said, he said, oh, let me look into it and came back and said, okay, I can prescribe this to you, but you'd be the first person who doesn't have full-blown AIDS that this has been prescribed to. Oh, so wow. I think some questions that get raised and I don't want to get in trouble. And I was like, okay, right. I get it. No, thanks for looking into that. Um, so that means health insurance won't cover it. So that means you got to go bodybuilder drug dealer to get it. Right. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Or just get lucky. And in my case, I just found it. 
it just fell off a truck. I didn't do anything illegal. I just totally just found it. I just got lucky. Yeah. But I, I yeah. love it when that happens. <laughs> I love it when that happens. Yeah. But yeah. And, and so it's, it's, I wish it was just a thing you could go pay for. Cause I have to, there's like, it's like anything else. There's all these different kinds, you know, different brands and you got to read on forums. Like, okay what is this shit that I'm about to inject in me and how much do I use? And do you got to like bro science the whole thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I'm telling you that shit fucking worked. Like I recovered from breast dog, gnarly breast dog too. Cause I have like, um, for lack of a better term, like a male pectoral system. Like I had big old pecs before. So they had to cut, not just uh bilateral, they had to cut up too. And like, fucking tear up my muscles deeply cram this huge thing and through the nipple and then yeah like three days later i was like <laughs> feel fine you know what i mean wow. so wow what other uh procedures do you have ahead of you oh geez um so penis i already talked about i'm getting my butthole redone which is a thing i didn't know you could do um there's a doctor in new york oh, what is it called bespoke something bespoke medical in new york it's i don't know if the doctor is gay or it it doesn't matter but it's a very gay looking practice it's like are you a bottom do you want a bottom better come here we'll help you out like that's like their marketing um Uh and they like i was a wild ass bottom in my 20s just willy-nilly throwing shit up there right so Mm -hmm. i got some i don't have a pretty butthole anymore i have like a Mm -hmm. fisting bottom butthole not that it was a fisting bottom but it looks like i was so I want a pretty butthole because if I'm doing porn as a female, you know, we're doing close ups in yeah. 4K on the butthole now, whereas mm-hmm. we weren't as a dude. So, as it turns out, you can totally fix that. Like, you just go to the butt doctor and they just revamp, just overhaul your butthole. Do cool. they like remove hemorrhoids? Like, what are they? It's kind of like a similar thing. These laser scalpels, Botox, this and that. They, and I don't have a problem taking big things on my butt, which I'm grateful for. But that's a service they offer too. Like if somebody um, really wants to do anal, but it just hurts every time, that's a solvable problem. Now you can go to the doctor and they will get in there and loosen this muscle, relax that. Some people have a curved situation inside them. So where like mm-hmm. if a hard thing goes in, it just bends, it's ouchy, that can be yeah. fixed too. Like it's all that. So I'm getting my butthole reworked. Um, Wait, that's, you can that, get like surgery to like make yourself like the best anal performer of yeah, all time. Absolutely. Yeah. And that I'm told we'll see is actually covered by health insurance. So really? cool. if it is, we'll see because health insurance anthem has not been cool to me. So we'll see. But mm-hmm. um, so that I'm going for the console in a couple of weeks for that to schedule that. Robo penis um, in June. I'm getting hip implants, butt implants, and lipo basically every fucking where, like arms, waist, lower back, upper back, belly, everything. And I have a ton of fat to suck out, but I didn't know this about lipo. If you just suck out the cell, the fat cells, period, like just get them out, you can't grow fat there anymore. Mm-hmm. Then you go eat McDonald's or whatever, and it goes somewhere else in your body. Like your butt or legs yeah. or something. So I want that. Like why while they're knocking me out to do the hip implants, I'm like, might as well suck all the fat out, buddy. So that's what they're gonna do. So that's a big recovery that's gonna be rough. where are you going? Where are you going for that? Uh so Dr. Stanton is if you want hip or butt implants, not a BBL, but actual like silicone implants, mm-hmm. Dr. Stanton in Beverly Hills is pretty much the go to. He does more of those implants than anyone in the world. And if you're getting any procedure done, what I've learned for the past nine months is you keep going to doctors for consults until you find the one that says that procedure I do more of than anyone in the world. Cause, and then you're about to learn a bunch of shit because they're going to say shit like Dr. Barrett, like, oh, I can go in through the nipple. It's fine. Where every other doctor said they can't. Every other mm-hmm. doctor I said, BBL is not going to work for me because I have mostly a visceral fat. My pelvic bone isn't wide enough anyway. The fat's not going to stick to this part. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not a fit. I say, can you do implants? And they say, you don't want implants. They're going to look crooked. They're going to look weird. They're going to look fake. Uh, I finally go to Dr. Stanton and he's like, yeah, everybody says that, but no, no, I do it all the time. And we stitch them to your bones. They don't move. And 
we make custom implants like 3D, like we make them that fit your body. Like the implants mm-hmm. we put in you are just made for you. So they're not going to look all crazy and fake. And you can go under the muscle on the butt. So it doesn't look, it's just your butt's just extended out, but it still feels like a butt. It doesn't feel like a rock or anything. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's do that. So Dr. Stanton. Is he the go. same guy doing your lipo? Yeah. And while I'm knocked out, he, he doesn't do fat transfer, but he does lipo really well from what I've read. So, mm-hmm. um, and lipo is pretty straightforward. It, as long basically you don't want to get burned. You can get burns from lipo. Um, uh, but he's done enough lipo to where I feel confident he's not going to burn me. So, yeah. Um, See, cause I went and I got bad lipo, like mm-hmm. maybe 10 years ago or something uh, like that. And they like took too much out. Like, and so I have like grooves in certain places. Like it was just like really badly done. Uh, like, I actually, wasn't even a licensed plastic surgeon. He was mm. a licensed dermatologist. And the way that he advertised it was like board certified, sorry, board certified, but board certified, but he was a board certified dermatologist, not a board certified okay, dermatologist. Life, but, but the way that he you up. promoted it was that. And I was stupid and I didn't do enough research. And I was you impulsive stupid. anyways. You saw board certified and you had faith in that like anyone else would. Yeah. That's not stupid. Yeah, I actually just- wrote him a really bad Yelp review, which I've li- literally never done. And I've had so many women reach out to me and say that he like totally did a hack job on them. So since I've had a baby, I have like belly fat that I just like cannot get rid of. Yeah. Um, I'm almost back to my original weight, but I just can't get rid of it. So that's something that I want to look into, but I'm so scared to get it done again because I, I don't want to have so I'm always like interested to know about like who's really good at that because yeah. that's literally all I want. Everything else is fine. It's just that, and this is this is common for women, you know, especially yeah. at my age and after having a baby, it's like, just, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you gotta find a good one. Charlotte, um, for procedure she's had done, I've just watched her research the shit out of it. And thank God I knew because I saw that. Like, oh, it's worth it to like, what you're doing now. It's like, okay, I want to do this, but I'm scared. I want to get it done right. That's the right attitude to have. Not like, mm-hmm. okay, I got 10 grand. Let's fucking go. Who's in town? Yeah. You don't want to, you don't do it. You want to, you might travel. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. To get it done right. That's kind of a thing. So that hip, butt, lipo, penis, then butthole, and then full FFS of full facial or feminization, facial feminization surgery, FFS, that's what that means, uh, where mm-hmm. they do like seven or eight surgeries on my face just to like fucking make it look right. Um, Are they going to like shave down bones and like add Yeah, to so if I turn sideways, you can see, so on a male skull, there's this brow mm-hmm. ridge, right? Yes. That's the thing. And I, did, I never noticed that before I started transitioning. Um and if no one pointed out to me, I probably still would have noticed it. But now it's one of those things when your brain sees a face subconsciously or whatever, it picks up male or female. Like mm-hmm. it's like just a tell. So mm-hmm. they got to fix that. And you, that's a surgery. That's also that, how, that's also how archaeologists can identify yeah. male and female bones from a skull generally a skull. Is, is that, brow tell from yeah. that brow ridge. So if you're going to fix that, you have to go to, there's very few surgeons in the world who can do that surgery because it's not just shaving the bone. That's actually a hollow. They don't know why, but that ridge is hollow. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe to make our skulls lighter, we don't really know. So they cut it off, mash up the bones, take some titanium or ceramic plates and fill in the hole. Otherwise, you're going to have a fucking dent in your skull. So they have to be really good at that. And then if you're doing that, you have to do the nose, otherwise your old nose won't fit your your forehead. It'll it'll sink mm-hmm. up funky. So they got to do a nose job, and then while they're doing the nose job, uh, males have I don't know if you can see if your viewers can see, but the dimension from lip to nose, like that measurement, it's much mm-hmm. longer on men than on women. So mm-hmm. they while they're doing the nose, they cut under the nose to do a lip lift, right? Mm-hmm. And then, then they take the chin and they shave off, shave off, mash up more bone, make a chin make sense because the male chins go, the dimension from lower lip to the bottom of your chin is longer on males than on females. Basically, on women, the biggest number is the forehead, and then it goes gradually smaller from there down. On men, mm-hmm. 
the biggest number is the chin and it goes gradually smaller the other way. So they just reverse that. Um, I'm not going to, most people do chin, I'm sorry, jaw, like the actual jaw hinge, shave that down. But I actually like having a ridge jaw. I like it. I'm going to keep mm-hmm. it. Like Sigourney yeah. Weaver, Charlize Theron. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's just keep yeah. that. So For I don't have to do somebody the, who doesn't have a strong jawline, trust me, keep, keep a keep nice jaw. strong jawline because I wish I had that. <laughs> yeah. And then I don't have to do the Adam's apple scrape because I don't really have one. It's lucky there. So that's cool. Um, So they're going to do all that. And then cheekbones, the doctor I'm going to, Kia Jampa, he's the only one that I know of that actually puts, uh, not bone, but 3D prints some shit. And it's hard like a bone and makes it fit your face perfectly. Every other FFS doctor just does fat transfer and puts fat in there. So instead Mm -hmm. of... um, Bone, like a hard female cheekbone that has fat over it. It's just all fat, which mm-hmm. I know people have done that and they look amazing. It looks really good. But for me, I'm like, I'd rather just have something like hard, you know, like that's mm-hmm. my skull. So I'm doing that. And then um, for the, f- I'm lucky I have a thick hair, head of hair, but it's mm-hmm. a very male hairline. So they're just going to do hair plugs. Just do, 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 fill that in. Mm-hmm. So that's December is when I'm scheduled for that, but uh, I already paid it off. So they're like, "We'll get you in sooner if we can." People cancel all the time, so I don't know when yeah. I'm going to go through full face surgery. But worst case, December, and then wow. by then, hopefully, I'll be done ish with hair removal, and then dick, butthole, hips, waist, lipo. That'll all be done. So when I recover from that surgery, if it's in December. Sometime after AVM, like late January, I'll be like done with the bullshit, basically. Then it's just diet, build leg muscle, the fun part. And the other thing is losing muscle. It's not a procedure, but it's probably the hardest part. Like I was there, I was 185 pounds of just muscle, just fucking shredded. Mm -hmm. And um, the only way to lose muscle is to starve it off and atrophy it. So I have to like in somewhat of a healthy way, starve all that muscle. So basically just eat salads and like bread. Yeah. Like zero protein diet if I can. It's possible, but you know. And then I've been doing Botox injections in the muscle that I'm trying to atrophy because that's what Botox literally atrophies muscle, Mm -hmm. which I don't think I can say I invented that procedure, but it definitely did not exist anywhere I heard of. And I just found an injector to try it with me. Someone else has probably tried it, but it's not written anywhere. So that's another thing for the book. Like, hey, by the way, if you want to speed up your muscle loss, Botox, you know. And you find that that's been working for you? Oh, it's crazy faster. Before that, I couldn't, um, I was doing an hour of cardio on an empty stomach every morning and barely eating and just getting minimal results. I mean, it just takes years. And everything you read on Reddit or anything People are saying, oh, I've been on hormones and starving for five years, and I'm just now starting to lose my neck and trapped. And I was like, I'm going to be 50 by the time. Fuck that. So Botox the shit out of my arm. My arms are like way skinnier than they used to be. It's still got a ways to go. My neck, I want to lose a couple more inches. So we're stabbing that with mm-hmm. Botox and all that. The, the oblique for me stuck out really far. So I had to stab that with Botox to like get that down. Um, that seems to are work. Are you going to? better are you going to change like your exercise routine i mean like, i have terms of, yeah like i haven't you know. lifted a weight since i started transitioning i'm just doing cardio on a stationary bike um mm-hmm. but once i'm done with all the surgeries and i've lost the muscle i want to lose then it's the fun part i can start eating fuck tons of protein and doing heavy leg days and you know what i mean build build the legs because while i'm losing this neck and arm muscle my legs are like nothing i've like tiny chicken legs now and my butt's like gone so i need to rebuild that but you can't do both at the same time and uh mm-hmm. also the hgh while it was great for healing from the boobs i had to really watch it like get off it as soon as i could once i was healed because hgh makes you retain muscle so it's like a wonder mm-hmm. thing but uh when you're trying to lose muscle you can't be on that right so, right I had to do that wow. so it's a I lot mean, of things this is want. like yeah and i mean it's a it's a serious commitment. I mean, you, I would imagine that you knew what you were going to be going through when you made your decision. I had no idea. I thought, oh, I guess it was like a decision to get on the hormones. Like, okay, I'm really, really doing this. And then start hair removal. 
I mm-hmm. thought I'd be doing hair removal like three months tops. And uh, I thought the hormones would move the fat and give me hips, uh, which is wrong. I thought, um, oh, I won't, maybe I won't need FFS because I've done makeup before. I look okay. And then the more I've learned, I've been like, I just got to get the FFS to just, I'm going to think about it the rest of my life. I got to do that. Um, yeah. I thought, I'm, I'm like, so I was a gym rat for like fucking 30 years almost, you know? I thought, oh, I'll be able to burn that muscle off and diet. I've, I've done, I've changed my body before. And it's like insanely harder. Than, oh, the voice thing too? I have to, that doesn't change the hormones. I thought it did, but it does not at all. So I've taken voice lessons once a week and then practicing how to raise my larynx when I talk. Basically, you learn how to sing is what you do. And then right. you use the those things, those methods to alter the way you talk. And you do it enough to where your brain says, that's how we talk now. And then your voice changes. So it's like a lot of work to like, and it comes and goes. I don't know if you can tell in this interview, but my voice is like, hi, hi, how are you doing? And then, oh yeah, like I know what you mean. You know, it's kind of <laughs> a little freaky. Yeah. I'm friends with yeah, uh, I- Ru- Ruby Havoc, who started transitioning right about when I did. And when Ruby mm-hmm. and I have coffee, it's like two Furbies. Like if you put them next to each other. Because we'll like walk up to each other, and then as we're walking up to each other, how have you been? Hips are moving more, you know what I mean? And then we just kind of like, <laughs> fam, 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 and then like I'll think of something emotional, and my voice will drop, and then Ruby's voice will drop. You know, it's like, and then we're up and down yeah. all over. It's fucking trippy. It's cool. Ruby's awesome. That's so though. crazy. Ruby's badass. I envy Ruby a so, lot because Ruby's just like chill about it, like not like mm-hmm. I'm like full blast. Like let's get this shit done. I want to get done. Ruby's like. Yeah. Yeah, I'm transitioning. It's cool. And I'm like, how are you so chill? Like, I'm just like, yeah. I'm sure Ruby <laughs> has their things, but um, I just envy their peace, their inner peace. It's just beautiful, you know? Yeah. Mentally, what has it been like for you? I mean, you just <sighs> mentioned, you know, that Ruby has inner peace. You feel that you're not feeling too serene about this? Is it Fuck just, no. I mean, no. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> no, like I was saying when we were starting, I had a, um, I had an actual panic attack like last week. I haven't had that. That's not happened to me since I was a little kid. Like I actually yeah. have it full, you know, there's crying like a little tear, a little, and then there's like full blast, like get down, holler like a lady, like it's not bubbling, crying. I haven't mm-hmm. done the second one. And since I was a little kid, it just hasn't, nothing's mm-hmm. been able to make me cry. Um, and last week it just all fucking explode. Just <laughs> Charlotte found me in the back porch, just like, curled up in a ball like she was, just thank god for my wife like knew what to do and like yeah with that oh god i would have been fucked if i was on my own so she saved the day and then uh she's so sweet she like took care of me i'm like crying like a weird like just uh, and then i was like ah, this is weird i don't know why i just want to go feed some ducks and she was like <laughs> you want to feed some ducks i got you we're gonna go feed some ducks we live in las vegas we're in a desert and she found a pond that had ducks like that we could go and then she had bird seed and we an hour and a half later we're feeding ducks and i'm like i love you we're cool <laughs> you know it's just she's wow. awesome she's a badass yeah. but um but yeah no i that was like a sign like okay maybe i need to chill a little bit you mm-hmm. know like just slow slow slower down a little bit mm-hmm. so but we're well i mean as an entrepreneur, I know that, you know, you've been such a hard worker and I'm sure that you went full force with your business and, and all that. So it seems to me that that's just kind of your nature, right? Is that when you decide you're going to do something, you throw everything that you have at it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There is another way, but I don't know it. Like to get anything done. I'm just burn a lot of gas, just fucking let's go and then get it. Um, so, but I, I, that's something to look at. I think you need to learn how to like, there's a healthier way to solve problems probably. So, yeah. but I'm getting shit done. I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. glad I'm where I'm at with hair removal. Jeez. Like if I would have gone slower, I'd still have so much more to do. That sucks. I've got a lot yeah. behind me, you know? What do you look forward to the most once your transition is complete? Um, just kind of going about my day, just being a human. I mean, that would be so nice to just, like, I'm starting to kind of get that experience now. Like, I'm going to go run some errands after this. 
uh, when I go to FedEx to do my thing, there's a good chance no one's going to be like, how you doing, sir? Man, I, I, and like, they don't want to offend me, but they're trying to be nice, but it's awkward now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to like, mm-hmm. go be a fucking human on the, on a normal level. That would be nice. And then I'm looking forward to like getting back to work a little bit. I was pretty mm-hmm. happy being retired, but the whole like big dick milf thing, I'm like, that sounds fun. I want to go do that. Yeah. You know, like get out yeah. there and trade shoot and like, that kind of stuff and um uh i you know like i, I mean i talk about my wife all the time i love, fucking love my wife she's definitely the most important person in my life but we're, we're poly so like you know not it's not a priority to me but like it could be cool to like date a little as a lady yeah. you know what i mean yeah like yeah and we'll take that as it comes it's like maybe maybe not i don't know but it's just interesting to me i'm like who would i attract as a lady because as a cis dude in a just the bare minimum of openness like we were pretty monogamous for poly people but anyway as a cis dude who's a sex worker who's married as fuck and definitely in love with her wife the women that i attracted were mostly toxic you you Mm -hmm. see what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. for you imagine being a single woman what would it what state would you be in to say oh yeah i'll go hook up with that married guy who's a sex worker who definitely just cares about his wife. You know what I mean? It's different, Mm -hmm. but but like a dude would jump into that. Like, Oh, I'm going to get laid. Cool. Fuck it. And then I'll go home. You know what I mean? But it's different. Like, Mm -hmm. so it's, that's interesting to me. Like what, not just people and sex, but like, what will I attract as this other yeah. Type of what situation. will it be like to live in the world as as a yeah. woman? As yeah. A fully transitioned woman. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. But more than anything, just chill and just like finally like relax. Yeah. You know, like, not having to get electrolysis done. <laughs> not having to do face torture nine hours a week would be great. Yeah. And then yeah, just go on a vacation and just not have to think about the next procedure or mm. have to describe my genitals to people anymore. Like just kinda mm. being it's weird, and I, I know people mean well, but imagine if every t- interview you did, every shoot you went to, everything, they said, how, how, where are you at with menopause? How's that going? What are you doing with your vagina? Like, mm. how's that going? Are you going to get anything done? And you had to, like, open them up to that part of you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of gnarly. You know, like I'd like to not be dealing with that anymore, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you because, you know, I mean, trans, you know, transgender people have obviously always existed, but it's kind of like the first time that we're really like talking about it as a society, like openly it's in the news and it's something that comes up a lot. We see, you know, big mainstream brands finally starting to embrace it. I am myself actually. Um, just, you know, to call myself out, I'm shooting my first trans scene next month. Oh, cool. I've never shot one before. Good deal. So yeah, no, I'm excited. It's with Domino Presley, who's gorgeous. Cool. So I'm very much looking forward just, yeah. just to working with her just cause she's beautiful. Yeah. You know? Domino's beautiful. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, I mean, do you feel, are you kind of, I was going to ask, like, you know, so many people are, are curious about trans people. I mean, obviously yeah. we are, this is why I have you want to just spend an hour and a half asking you about it sure. um, in your day to day. Like, so I guess my question for you would be if I was a regular cisgender human being who didn't know a lot about trans people was curious, you know, met somebody who I knew was trans or transitioning, like, should I not ask questions? And I, I know it's different for everybody, but what's like the best, what's the best way to just be respectful? I think just treat people like humans, you know, mm-hmm. like if you're like, how was your day? Oh, did you travel in? How was the flight? Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, you went to that restaurant? I like that restaurant. I don't like it. What do I like? What do you like? You know? Oh, you don't like that? I kind of like that. You know what I mean? Like people just talk to each other like, oh, you're mm-hmm. good at a thing? Cool. I want to learn about that thing. Or you need know, help with the thing? I know about that thing. You know, like people, that level of conversation should come first before mm-hmm. um what's going on with your genitals 
Like what, like just think about, I think the menopause thing's a great example because I don't, I don't go around asking women like, are you glad you're not going to have periods anymore? What's that like? I don't have a vagina, so I don't know what that's like. Like, what is it like? Tell me about menstrual menstrual cramps. I don't understand. Like, what's that like? Mm -hmm. Like, it just, it's weird. You know, Mm -hmm. it's a weird way to like talk to people. Um, And then when you get along with someone better and they open up more, shit comes up in conversation, you know? Right. But if I really want to learn about like that other genders that I can't experience because I don't have those parts, the the internet's really cool for that. Mm -hmm. You know, (laughs) I could just look shit up. I mean, it's like not that hard to like Google and go on Reddit you know, it's good. There's a lot of screaming neckbeards on Reddit, but there's a lot of good information on Reddit. You know what I mean? Is there a good subreddit that people should consider visiting that you'd recommend? Um, you know, it's, uh, I think translator is what it's called. I think that's the one it's people, it's trans people sharing their before and after pictures. But Mm -hmm. what you get is people in the comments ask like, holy shit, how'd you get your hips to do that? You know what I mean? So you get kind of all the infos in there somewhere in the comments, mm-hmm. you know, like, well, do you mind if I ask who's your doctor? Like, how'd you do that? Are you on Spyro? What are you doing? You know, and people, mm-hmm. I learned kind of almost, I at least learned what else I needed to learn there, you know, in that right. subreddit. Like that was like a great starting place to like get, peel back, open the hood and be like, okay, what are we looking at? here? You know what I mean? And then later get more specific, but and in the other sense, you got to ask yourself, like, the dudes that are on set with you, that you hire or whatever, how much do they really need to know about menopause? You know? Yeah. Like, do they really need to know? Yeah. Like, if they're asking you about that, like, would you be like, why are we talking about this? Like, what? Because you're never going to go through this. You know what I mean? Like, why? It's cool. You're curious, yeah. but what do we, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of that that needs to be like, I think the world needs to kind of look at like, Hey, maybe, you know, cause it's yeah, not, it's the know. whole, like, I don't want to be a circus freak and neuter than the other. Trend yeah. Woman, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I, I kind of asked that question cause I have a friend, somebody that I work with that is like, you know, kind of knew nothing about, uh, trans people until they started working with me because, you know, I interview people on my podcast and now I'm going to be working with someone, um, next month. And, and she's always wanting to like ask these questions and like, you know, kind of drill these people. I mean, I've seen her do it with like non-binary people as well. And I'm always just kind of like, you know, maybe don't, you know, like make somebody explain themselves to you. So that's kind of like why I wanted to ask that question. Cause it, it felt like something that was invasive and, and could be super annoying. And so I just, I guess I wanted to hear it from the, the actual, the mouth of somebody going through that, that yes, what I thought is that is <laughs> a little bit invasive and kind of annoying. Well, it's just, it's, it's not like, I mean, you know, I'm a sex worker, I'm a queer sex worker. So I'm used to talking mm-hmm. about shit that other people would knock about. So I'm not offended. I'm not, but whatever, but mm-hmm. it, it kind of gets my goat that it's the norm to treat trans mm-hmm. people like, like it's a serious pro- and it's not just like a socially awkward thing. I mean, people try to kill us, you know? Yeah. Like we literally, when I leave the house, I have to bring a gun because, and when I go to California, I'm more scared because I don't have my gun on. And if you're going to carry a gun, you have to get training. So I had to, I'm a person that gets shit done. So I had to go train with special forces types and like learn how to get good at shooting and otherwise I don't want to like draw a gun and spaz out and like shoot myself in the foot right I gotta like right. Jason Bourne that shit and like drop three people bah, 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 you know what I mean like I, <laughs> which you can learn in like three months it's not it's not like yeah. learning jujitsu where it takes 10 years like you put in do some drills do some training you get pretty fucking good but yeah there's people try, like litter I'm not gonna get too deep into it but we got restraining orders out there. You know what I mean? There's people coming, trying to kidnap us. You know what I mean? Like it's Mm -hmm. fucking problem. You know what I mean? Um, Because I'm different. I'm not. So do you feel, yeah, I was going to say, do you feel unsafe in a way that 
you didn't feel as a cisgender man. Cause I was kind of trying to explain this to my husband, you know, after we watched this particularly disturbing movie about mm -hmm. what it's like just to be a woman and know that like, you're kind of always in danger. When you know? there's that um, aggression, like if I go to CVS or Walgreens or some shit, um, if I were dressed like this, some people are going to look, you know, they're going to mm -hmm. see short skirt, pantyhose, tits, whoa, you know. So I'm dealing mm -hmm. with that. I, I'm trying to be empathetic with my wife, who I love very much. I've had some glimpse of like, she does not go to the grocery store, period. She Instacarts everything. And the reason is the grocery store is terrifying for her because at best, some dude's going to walk up to her and say, nice tattoos. Wow. Where'd you get this? What's going on? Uh, you know what I mean? Or some lady, but normally some dude. And it's scary because she cannot overpower that person. She mm -hmm. has zero, zero chance if that person gets their hands on her of mm -hmm. winning that fight short of, I mean, she carries a gun too. So, I mean, she'll probably fucking shoot him, but like short of that, that's terrifying. So now with the, that's the thing with the hormone change too. I'm physically weaker, like, um, a 50 pound suitcase. I used to be able to pick up with one arm and just throw in the back of my truck, you know, biggie. Now I got to like, get ready, brace myself to my hips and do it, you know, lift with my legs, yeah. move it in there. So it's scarier. Um, you know, uh, I'm not, yeah, like I don't want to get too deep into it, but we were physically threatened very much. And, uh, and, it was scarier to me because I wasn't a 185 pound dude who's used to going to the gym and picking up 100 pound dumbbells and just chest pressing them like it's nothing and drop it. Like I was the sh not always the strongest guy in the gym, but pretty normally pretty close to like the biggest monster in there, you know, like on compared to average people. So if there was a physically threatening situation, gun or no gun, I knew I could at least throw this person on the ground or at least grab them and my wrist power could squeeze and hurt them. You know what I mean? Like it's had power. I had so much power. And now I don't have that raw physical power. So I have to bob and weave and gun, knife, fucking pepper spray, flashlight, be ready to draw. Like, you know what I mean? It's just a different game. It's way scary. Yeah. Well, and I'm and white. Too. I'm white. Imagine if yeah. I was, God, Bless black trans women. They, they get murdered yeah. all the fucking time and no one cares. They don't even call the cops. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's 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 awful. It's way um, awful. Like so yeah, that's scarier, you know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a thing because we're not quite female, we're not quite male. So mm -hmm. I think that's the where the threat comes in. We're like, well, it's not really human, so I can walk up to them and just grab their crotch. You know, or I can walk up to them and just start asking about their genitals. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. because they're not yeah. really this or not really that, somehow not human. I can get away with this, you know, and that's yeah. scary. It's bullshit, you know. What do you think the most misunderstood aspect of being trans is? I think people, well, depending on the person you can talk to, if, less now than before, people used to think, I think it's a choice. Like, why would you do that? You know, like, why would you, and it's not like, it's, it, it's a choice of like, how far do I want to go physically, but being trans, like, I'm more comfortable presenting as female. I mean, I'm more non-binary-ish, just, I'm like a non-binary person that wants to present as female and be recognized as female. So I'm mm -hmm. less extreme than some, but for many, it's like, no, you're, they're just not comfortable in that body and they need to make that change. Um, yeah. And the assumption is, uh, oh, did you have a rough childhood? Or, oh, it's that therapy can fix that or whatever. Or, or oh, you're on the hormones now, so you're good. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, mm -hmm. what if I don't want to look like a, dude and, and if, for people who are good looking like a like just throwing on a dress and taking the hormones i think you're fucking awesome i think you're braver than i'll ever be but mm -hmm. i'm not good with that I, and uh, for me i need to like fully look like a sexy lady if i can you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it's just different you said you just said now that you you feel like you're more non-binary but you present 
as female. Can you maybe explain a little bit more what that means? Sure. So I guess I can only say from my experience and then my perspective of others, but I know a lot of trans women who just prefer to, like, they want to just be referred as female, period. That's it. If they do have a penis, don't talk about it, don't look at it, don't address it. It's not there. We're going to pretend like that penis is not there. We're going to call it a clit instead of a penis, right? With me, um, I'm very comfortable being a trans woman, period. Like, Mm -hmm. that might change, but I just don't imagine myself saying, no, I'm a woman woman. I'm a woman. You know, like I picture myself as a visually hot woman that has a big dick that works, if that makes sense. And then maybe one day a vagina, but I'll always have some male aspects to me. Just don't want to be seen as female. Whereas before I started transitioning, I was, I just considered myself, I guess I didn't talk about it much, but I guess non-binary. Like, like, yeah, he called me, he, I look like a dude, whatever. I don't care. But I related so much to women. I was like, I don't really relate to dudes. Like, I didn't feel like a man. I never really felt like I'm a man, man. I'm fully man. Mm -hmm. I felt like competitively at male shit, it was important to me, probably because I was trans and didn't know it. I was like, well, I need to do better at man shit than men to prove something, you know? But I, that's because I didn't feel like I was really a man, you know what I mean? Because I apparently wasn't. Right. So. Right. Does that make sense? Wow. I don't know if that makes sense. I mean, y- yes. Yes and no. I mean, I think that, you know, somebody like me, like a cisgender woman who's super comfortable being a woman who's Mm -hmm. very much identifies as a woman and feels very feminine in all those ways. I don't think I'll ever be able to fully understand what it's like to identify as non-binary or the different gender. But I think I can understand, you know, maybe this desire to just like not have to adhere so strictly to these labels and these like gender roles that we pigeonhole people into and that maybe somebody can be more than just a woman or just a man and that's and that's it so well it's, it's sometimes kind of- when with understanding things it's like if you had a cup if you fill the cup with big rocks first then if it gets filled with water or sand or whatever cool but just get the big rocks in there you know and like one of the big rocks is there are a lot of people who aren't male or female non-binary period they don't want to do what i'm doing and they don't want to be referred to as male or female just they're they non-binary and that's cool and like if i can grasp that rock to put in the cup and fill everything else around it i think a lot of other things make sense you know i have a lot of friends that are non-binary and they're they're not trans they're not male they're not female they're just don't they're just non and people say, well, do you prefer, do you feel more like a he or more like a she? And they're like, that's the dumbest question ever. I just told you I'm non-binary. I'm neither. You know what I mean? Like to them. Yeah. I think that's the one to grasp. And then the trans stuff starts to make sense and everything else. For me anyway, I don't know if that helped, but. Yeah. No, I mean, well, you know, I think that having conversations with people like you and is, is helpful at least for people like me and hopefully for my audience as well, because yeah. the first step to understanding other people is to talk to them about, you know, how they see things and how they experience things. And, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to do is just learn and let other people tell me about their experiences and, you know, hopefully get a greater understanding, um, yeah. of humanity at large from that. I think so. I think it's, yeah, it, no, it's good. It's so good what you're doing and people, we're all just trying to learn more about each other and we don't even have the words yeah. to describe most of the shit we need yeah. to still, still that we have the English language is like the, has more words than all of them. We still don't have all yeah. the words. It's crazy. You know? I mean, I think ultimately like all of us are just trying to like find yeah. our most authentic selves and, and sure. live our ways like that. I think that maybe what society does and what we're all possibly at fault at is that we try too hard to put labels on people and like give names and, and, you know, so that we can understand, because some of us only understand people if they're in this very specific box and maybe we can all open our minds and our eyes to the idea that like not everybody fits into like a box and, 
and that's okay. And you know, maybe well, we the don't boxes need to, like understand it, but we could like, you know, not tolerate it's the wrong word, I guess, but accept them. Well, I think um, it's it's just how it's you know, question the box itself, you know, like why, right, yeah, why do we even need this box? Kind of like the why. There's no situation where some younger guy would ask you about menopause or some younger woman would ask a male, so are you impotent yet? Like you're older. <laughs> are you, does your dick still work? What's that like? <laughs> huh? You know, like, wow. Yeah. Like it just doesn't, we don't need to know. Like we don't, not that we don't need to know because people can know anything they want to know, but like, why are we even in this box here? You know, mm -hmm. like it's kind of silly. A yeah. lot of it is like, know, there's just so much more to people than our gender, you know? Yeah. I think ultimately, hopefully that's the greatest takeaway from today. So Lisa, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. This has been so interesting. This is weird, like going on an hour and 40. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. This is like one of the longest interviews I've done in a long time. And well, I feel like we could keep talking, but, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think they will. This has been, this has been so interesting and, you know, I really appreciate you being so open and transparent and just super cool about talking about all of this. And, um, I'm just, uh, I'm just really grateful for people like you who are out there to, who are doing their thing, you know, well, like I said, you being too. your most authentic self. So it's, I've really enjoyed the conversation and everything. Oh, and Battle Cat wants to have Hi, so, kitty cat. Yeah. Hi, kitty. He wants to help. <laughs> he always wants to help. Well, awesome. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thank you, Lucy. Can you tell everybody, um, you know, your social media handles, your sure. website plugs, all that? Yeah, the, the main thing at pervout.com, P-E-R-V-O-U-T.com. That's my porn network I own. I think all my socials link from there. but And then on Instagram and Twitter, it's Mama Heart X. So at M-A-M-A-H-A-R-T-X. Yeah, that's the, that's the one. And TikTok, but I think mm -hmm. I've only done one video. So. Uh, oh, you got to you gotta get on TikTok, on man. TikTok I, now, I, now. I resisted it for a long time. and um, It's the jam. And, yeah, there's now so it's much the trap to be had. Yeah. I'll get, uh, yeah, I'll get it together. There's little dance. Also, like there, great recipe. You know, they say that oh, yeah. like, you have your 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 side of TikTok. Yeah, like what um, you see. Yeah. What you see, yeah. And I get like all kinds of like great salad recipes and like yeah. workout things and like toddler stuff. So I get it's funny because what I post is like porn shit and yeah. like clips from my podcast. But then what I see is like salad recipes and like yeah. how to like prevent your toddler from having tantrums. Right. <laughs> Like Charlotte's TikTok is all like cute frogs and stuff. Like that's what she sees. And then mine is like sexy cocktail waitresses dancing in pantyhose. Cause I'm just that kind of a pervert where I'm like, I have a thing for the outfit, the cocktail waitress outfit, like the, the mm -hmm. leotard and pantyhose kind of thing they wear. Sometimes it's like a thong thing. And then they do like little dances and it's like fascinating. I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Look at that wiggle. I go, wait, can I make my hips now? I'm like, can I look like that? You know what I mean? So, so we have very, <laughs> she's got cute frogs. You got recipes. I've got whatever Sexy cocktail is. waitresses. Sexy cocktail waitresses. <laughs> wiggling. Hooters girls waitresses. You know, wiggling. Wiggling. Yeah. wiggling. It's good. It's good shit. So, yeah. So speaking of TikTok, you guys can find me on TikTok at yeah. Holly Randall and filtered on Instagram cool. and on Twitter at Holly Randall. Yeah. And of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Lucy, again, thank you so much for your time. Give our love to your wonderful wife, uh, Charlotte, um, who's also been a guest on this show. If yeah. you guys want to check out her interview, it was yeah. a few years back, but um, it's a really good one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, much love to both of you. And thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. I'll see you guys next week.